Ah yes, hi, welcome, I'm Christian, welcome to Lazy Devs, welcome to our uh, pork-like tutorial. Um, so today we are going to be, last time around you might saw we create like a little slime here. Some, oops, sorry about that. And today something we want to do is we're going to actually expand the system of the monsters, we're going to try to add more functionality to it. And some, I think one big step that I want, that I've been kind of dreading a little bit, but I, we really need to do this step, is... We want, we actually want to probably turn our character, our main character into a monster, <laughs> into a mob. Um, I actually looked up what mob actually means, where the word mob comes from, and it comes from, it, it means mobile. Makes sense to me. <laughs> so, uh, so our character is also a mobile technically, so it's, he's also a mob. Um, I usually associate mob with like it some seems like mob is like a mob of gremlins, you know, like to me It was like always like okay. These are like monsters, but yeah, we are a monster obviously apparently So we want to expand this mob system that we have to kind of um, Carry all this information that we have that we need for our, for our character and a lot of the information is already you kind of like already there We need to we need to have the offset X and offset Y we need to have the socks and soy we need to have the flipping um, the morph, what was the morph? Oh yeah, we need the morph as well. And um, the timer we actually don't need. Uh, because the timer is, I think, something that is, uh, is gonna be for like basically the entire turn. Um, so, you know, there's gonna be a timer for all of the mobs, uh, enemy mobs and all of the, uh, and the, the, our character as well. So yeah, I'm gonna just copy this and I'm gonna make sure that our maybe our mob system can actually um, take in all of this information and then we're gonna we're gonna like figure out how we're gonna feed um, feed uh, inf required information to our players and how we can make all the existing systems work with this stuff. So we're gonna all, um, we're gonna make sure that you know there's some all of the information has like some starting values in here. So equals zero um flip flip quotes false oh yeah uh, i just noticed flip where um, it's not possible so let's make it flp mm, and then morph like so um so we said that the t is not something we're going to actually save inside the mob because the t is a kind of like a global counter for how long the animation is, is happening so we're going to keep the pt around now let's do a, an add mob two that's going to be a slime a add mob one for our player so our player is going to be in the mob number one <clears throat> Um, so yeah, this was my thinking here. Um, we can start actually maybe also getting these things out. So we're gonna try to replace all of our systems so they will work with every type of mod, uh, mob. Okay, so now we actually have to think about this one and two here, about these things. Because these are kind of like, um, we, we defined it that this is the type of the mob that we're gonna spawn. So somewhere in our program, there has to be kind of like a library of mobs that are like kind of like a bestiary so to speak that our add mob function will pull information from so this bestiary thing can include information like what kind of animation what kind of sprites am i using for this mob and later on when the mobs actually have like maybe health points associated with them and an attack power it will also grab these things from it so it's like okay this is like a very simple slime it has one health point so we're going to assign going to spawn this mob with this kind of health point Generally something I'm doing here, and that's kind of like, because this is like a small program, we have to keep everything compact. Uh, the mob is gonna contain information about, you know, uh, graphical stuff where the sprite is <laughs> and stuff like that, and what kind of stuff like that, <laughs> where the animation is, uh, when, what kind of frames we're using for animation and, you know, where what the offset is of the sprite, but also gameplay information, what kind, how much health this mob has, which I think is fine in this case, again, it's good to kind of like keep things separated, but you know, at some point it's like you're 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 creating more overhead than is necessary. I think for for create that's fine. Okay, so I think up here, let me see how I did it last time around, because this time it's going to be a bit different. Hmm. Okay, so um, I'm going to create a a library. I'm going to call this mob Annie. 
So because this is the thing that concerns me the most. This is the thing that actually stops me from proceeding. Um, it's going to be a, a kind of like a... Um, oh wait, how do I'm going to do this? Yeah. Um, so we're going to do like a mob any that's going to be like an um, array that contains the uh, the animations for each mob. And of course, now uh, there's a bit of a problem here because you know, we see that every animation contains of four values. So we could do something like this, like a um, array of arrays, so to speak, right? So this kind of like the first entry in this array will have the animation for our player because our player is mob, mob, mob number one. And the second would have the animation for the for the slime. But um, I think just because I'm like, I know exactly how I want to later compress all this information so it's kind of like doesn't take up too many tokens, I think we can generate this information just from the starting frame. We just want to make sure that, you know, each animation has four frames, which I think will be the case with most of our time because we know that Kirai's animations have four frames and our animation also has four frames. So we just want to make just all, just always save the first frame of the animation and then, um, automatically assume that the next subsequent uh, three frames also belong to the animation. So let us do, let's just always just save the first animation. Like let's uh, let, let us have this mob any array, always just save the first frame of the animation of each mob. Like so. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, and then for the mob, for the slime mob, that's going to be 192. Something like this is what I'm thinking. And so when we are spawning the mob, we can um, we can do something like m. Uh, we can go like four i equals um, zero to three do, and and go like um, I don't know actually, any equals this, and then go like uh, m dot any add n dot any. Now um, we're gonna grab the first frame from from here. Mob any here. Mob any square brackets tube type plus i. So we can fill the animation of that mob with um, with you know first the the first frame um, of the animation and then the subsequent three. Uh, frames, so so we we regenerate those animations here, and I think there might be even even a more efficient way of doing this, but I think that that will do the trick for now. Something I also want to be doing here is I want to return m like this because I want to have access to my player mob always. I don't want to be looking for it. I want to have like a array that um, um, uh, variable that always points to the player. Um, so I'm gonna call this like pmob. Let's call it pmob or pl player hmm. p. Let's go pmob um, equals add mob like this. And so when let's just like go uh, go from so we don't need this technically anymore, that's no longer necessary. Uh, we're just drawing all of the mobs and we don't care about anything else. Uh, another thing that we want to be doing here is now when we're controlling stuff. This is going to be interesting. So for example, PT is fine. Um, here is where we're moving the player. So this is doing the player's turn. Um, just let's, let's just rewrite it for now, and then we're gonna think about maybe there, if there's a way of doing this more more efficiently. But we're gonna go pmob dot mob, and he, here's kind of where we're suffering, because you know this was you this was just a uh, uh, variable before, but now it's a it's a dot here. We lost a token for that. Mm, and hopefully the fact that we don't have to write certain functions twice anymore, like for example, the fact that we, the draw function, we could remove this, this, this whole line, you know, that was like, uh, you know, 20, 20, almost 20 tokens there. Hopefully that will make up for the losses that we had here. Um,
So off the bat here, you see that there's moth walk and moth bump. And those are kind of like things that are interacting with the information in our, our player. And it would be nice if they were, they could, I could use them for every kind of mob. So we're gonna go pmob mob um, p dot mob. And they will, those things will, will know which mob they they belong to. So it's gonna be like mob dot ox equals mob dot sox and mob dot oy mob dot soy. The pt we might actually change a little bit in a second. Not this and this and this and this. Already I'm seeing some 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 op options here. Okay, and then maybe we not just like give this um, this um, move function not only um, the argument of what mob to apply the animation to, but also what how you know what time, how, you know how far this animation should be should progress because there might be a second timer happening for the mobs for the for the monsters and a different timer happening for the player, and we want to use the same animation f um, function for the player and the uh, the bad guys. So something like this, I'm thinking, and then be like, um, yeah, yeah, like, um, hmm, I need tea, something like animation timer, and then be like here. We might actually, this could be, we could save some tokens here, maybe. Um, Let's call it 80 maybe, animation timer. Yeah, 80 sounds so, something like from Star Wars maybe. <laughs> okay, oh, like this. Okay, so now these are working. Let's see what else we have to deal with. Um, these are all okay. Yeah, these are all okay. Okay, so now I think um, that also something that's also important in gameplay. This is, I think, where most of the stuff happens now. Um, so yeah, you see like all of these happening here. So <clears throat> you know, p pmob dot socks, uh, pmob dot soy equals um, this. That's good. And then pmob dot ox and pmob dot oy. Again, all of these are, you know, the, the costs of doing this. All of these dots here cost an additional token. Um, then p dot dot mov equals this, that's fine. Um, and then that's good here. Then here we also do this the same. And here as well. Now we already see that you know this function might be not quite as efficient, and we might actually reconsider it, re rewrite this function later on to kind of like work for all sorts of all sorts of mobs, because this might be like a universal kind of like move mob function, uh, and, and not something that's embedded in this in this uh, move player thing. But um, yeah, we already talked about this a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then here pmov dot mov. Good. Let's see if there's any other situation where we have. What about how do we? How do we? Just making sure that here when we're checking the ah yeah here see pmov dot x. See we need the player position a lot. And so every time we actually access the player position, now we lose a token. I'm, I'm a. Okay. Oh yeah, we don't call it flip anymore. We call it FLP. And I think in a draw function, we always said false, but it's kind of like, now it's gonna be m.flp. 
and right now we also need to add the offset like this that works it probably won't work oh my gosh it works i can't believe it it works <laughs> holy crap i am the best programmer in the world <laughs> Not gonna lie, that's surprising to me. <laughs> Great, I love it. Okay, so this is good. Now we have like uh, our player walking around and 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 um, and we kind like, of rewrote the system to be working with just uh, with just this mob system here. That's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna have to think about, so it would be nice if we now work ourselves towards a situation where we can actually hit the, the mob. We want, to, <laughs> we want to be like, okay, attack this, this mob, attack this, this opponent. So let me see. Yeah, we're gonna be working in this gameplay part now. Yeah, right now we have like this, these, these kind of like everything is stuffed into a smooth player function, but we might be pulling it apart now. Um, let me think about this a little bit. So I think um, a, good, a good function to, to do is going to be a function that is going to be um, like has mob or get mob, get mob um, is going to be uh, x, y. So just kind of like something that gets me a mob at a certain position. Um, now the problem is like every time we want to see if there's a mob somewhere we actually have to loop through all of the mobs and see if there's a mob there so um so yeah that's something that we're gonna do now bam um so we're drawing going through all of the mobs and we're gonna go like if uh, mx uh, equals x and m dot y equals y then and return m so we like kind of like looping through all of the mobs and seeing if there is a mob at a given position at a given map coordinates if there is one we return that um, yeah we return that and otherwise we return false <clears throat> okay, uh, and now also I want to add another function that uh, I should have added before, but I think that's kind of like something that we need now, is walkable. It's kind of like a similar function that just returns if something is walkable or not. And it's kind of like weird because we already had like, it's kind of like a very simple test here, right? So it's just like, if... The test is if there is a tile here, right? That's that's our walkable test. Well, not quite. Um, so there might be different reasons for why a tile might be walkable or not. Here's something that we haven't considered yet. So the way we drew our map is all neat and tidy because there's a really nice wall around the edges. But what happens? What happens if we have a situation where we generate a level where you know the there is like a the you know the room goes all the way to the edge let's try that what hap what what happens with our program if, if that happens let's be like okay let's make it this room really big so it goes all the way to the edge right okay let's try it we're leaving the map we're ne never uh, appear at least it didn't crash i'm happy about this don't get me wrong but um, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, we have to like take take that into account as well. Mm. So we also need another function that is being like um, in bounds x and y. That just basically tells us if a certain uh, coordinate, if that's in bounds or not, like in the bounds of the map. Uh, so we're gonna go like if um, x is x is smaller than zero or um, y is smaller than zero or x uh, is greater than uh, 15 
or y is greater than 15 then uh, we can actually return that um, return not <laughs> so like if this entire statement if that's true we are out of bounds so we're returning uh, we're returning like the reverse of that that's why there's the not so when we checking something for being walkable we want to take that into consideration like if, if it's in bounds so we're gonna go like if in bounds x y then uh, and then otherwise return false um, and then here we here's where we check if something is a wall so we're gonna go like if um, f get tile zero um, if if that's false then return true and now we're going to plug this as walkable this has all of this has a point don't 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 don't, uh, don't be like this so we're going to check if this is walkable is uh, we're going to plug this in here so if it's walkable is false right um is false then no, actually no, it's, if it's walkable, then we walk, and if it's not walkable, we don't walk. So we're actually switching these things around now. Again, they, they, we're probably gonna throw them out later on. Let's try this. Oops, something is wrong. Uh, nil with a number, um, something is nil. Uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay, so that completely just doesn't work. But at least, at least it doesn't let us leave the screen. That's good. That's that's an improvement already. But also, it kind of ignores, um, ignores the. Oh yeah, of course we didn't do the f get. Um, so we're gonna go here. This part we're gonna copy out. And that actually means that we might not actually need the fcat here, although we do have this thing here. So yeah. So yeah, this works now. Can I interact? Yes, I can. So the next thing is I don't want to be actually able to walk through a monster. Um, so something I noticed that was kind of like very useful is to kind of have like different modes of how we check if something's walkable because depending on who's asking a tile might be walkable or not. So for example, when we're generating a level, we actually don't really want to care if there's a monster on a tile or not. Like if there's, um, if we're trying to find out if a de certain tile decoration is, you know, if that's, if we have a free spot to create like a grass tile, you know, then we actually don't care if there's a mob on this. But for example, if there's like um, pathfinding, in this case, we actually do care if there's a mob at this tile or not. So uh, I'm, I like to have this mode here. And that mode would kind of like specify what kind of mode we're talking about. So we're gonna go if mode, um, but I don't wanna always have to six, spell it out which mode it is. So there's gonna be like a default mode and then it's gonna be like a special mo mode for different, different, um, different types of checking if something is walkable. So usually if mode uh, equals nil, then mode equals um we have to think about what the default mode is is good um 
what the default mode is. Um, but I definitely want to be um, in a situation where it's like, okay, if the, the, the tile is walkable, then we're going to ma make sure that, okay, if um, mode equals check mobs, then end. And then we're going to go if um, get mob um, x, y equals false. So if there is a mob, if there's no mob, then return. Or no, let's let's go do it like this. If mob, then return false. Else and return true. Something like this. Can I make it a bit more simpler? I cannot just um, return get mob. Um, no, we can return get mob x y equals false like this. So if this statement get mob x, um, x y equals false, if there is no mob, if that's true, then that means that this this tile is walkable. So here we'll be checking if something is walkable. Uh, we actually want to check for mobs as well. So we just know if we can like freely walk into something or not. So now the mobs actually stop me. And so now this is a situation where we can actually think about, you know, how we can start interacting with the mob, attacking maybe the mob somehow. Something I don't like here, and I have to think about how to do this, is that I'm behind the mob, that my sprite is drawn behind the mob. Not my favorite situation. But alas. Okay, so now that we hit the mob, it's kind of like worthwhile to figure out, okay, why? Um, so this is now, okay, this the tile is walkable, so let's just walk. But otherwise, if the tile is not walkable, you have to figure out, okay, why is the tile not walkable? So, um, so we're gonna go like not walkable. We're definitely gonna do a bump here. Uh, but then, um, yeah, and then I'm gonna gonna go like okay. So if get nine, let's let's do it again. Local mob equals get mob um, dest x dest y. If mob equals false then you know you do this stuff else and uh, attack mob um, and or hit mob let's call this hit mob <laughs> hit mob um, and then so our player then attacks the mob right so it's gonna be p mob player mob attacks uh, the mob Am I missing something? That's it's that easy, right? So now we just have to write the hit mob function. Uh, attack, attack M, defender man N, <laughs> something like this. Okay, but here's where we're gonna stop this. So in the next episode, we're gonna to try to actually do this attacking function. So because we're bumping the animation place already correctly, like we are, we're bumping against the mob, um, but now, you know, there's gonna be like damage that's being exchanged. I have to do like an animation where, you know, um, we have to actually figure out how to do the attack, you know, how the combat mechanics work. We have to detract, uh, remove um, health points from the mob. If the mob is dead, we have to remove it from the game. There's might be uh, some visual feedback that we wanna also convey that the mob might flush flash out there might be like uh, um, damage points popping up so all these things is going to kind of be like a huge can of worms and that's something that we're going to do on the next episode as always the code for this will be down in doobly-doo and 
you can already play the already play the uh, prototype in uh, in our Discord channel. Thank you so much for joining me, and see you next time around, guys. Bye bye.